Welcome to this edition of When the Biomass Hits the Wind Turbine, a discussion of sustainable living and what that means to you and me. I'm Jay Warmke. And I'm Annie Warmke. And today we're going to talk about conscious consumption or thanks for nothing. So... <laughs> So <laughs> thanks for nothing. So funny I know. You thanks say it for that nothing. Way. Anyway, um, so so what exactly is conscious consumption, other oh, than difficult to say? Yeah. Okay. We're gonna just jump right in. Um, well, it has to do with pretty much everything in your life because somewhere in the last twenty years or so, our government and the corporations that own them. Uh, have decided that we are consumers and our only role in life is to consume. Um, So we decided that we didn't want to be in that role any more than we had to be. So we started looking at different categories. And what we wanted to do was to be able to say to ourselves, all right, we've made specific choices in all these different categories like our spending, our shopping, our food, our energy, our waste, and of course, new versus old, repurposing, reusing. And what does that mean? How could we honestly create a plan? Um, and what would we do with all of the money we're going to spend? And what will we spend it on? And how will we um, delegate that money to different categories? So, for example, uh, spending, we have a budget. And we try to look at what our expenses are and what our revenue is. And we try to look at that pretty much every month or sometimes more often. Um, Food. We have a basic plan for food. Uh, So in the summer, in the warm months, we're producing food through our gardens and um, by drying things, by uh, canning things, by freezing things. And also then we look at energy, and we've had a long-term energy plan. Okay, well, let me stop you right there because I know when people come to Blue Rock Station, one of the things that freaks them out a bit is not just that we're mindful of the consumption throughout the year, but we do a thing started a few years ago uh, in the wintertime when things are a bit slower for us that we called um, – well, it initially began as Thanks for Nothing Month, and, and that was kind of the, the whole um, – Conscious consumption, really, we like to, it sort of has that double meaning where, yeah, thanks for nothing, but also, you know, no, seriously, thank you for not nothing. consuming, but thank, you know, not thank you, but, but, but just giving thanks for the fact that, that you can enough. be, we yeah, enough. you can be aware yeah. of what you're consuming and, and be aware that, that it's, it's great not to shop. Well, I think how that all started was we were driving in the car and, I think you heard it, and you think I heard it, but we heard this radio show on WOUB mm-hmm. uh, talking I've about— I've heard of them. I have, too, and they're really great. Mm-hmm. Um, and they were talking about what it would take to go a certain amount of time without shopping. And so we started, while we were driving the car, thinking about what would that be like. And I thought that sounded pretty exciting and said, oh, we ought to try it. Well, then, in the meantime, we wrote— a few things about our ideas about that. And then we had an intern, a French intern, Nance Thomasy, and he wrote to us from France and said he wanted to be involved as well, but he thought we ought to also not consume energy. Right, right. And at the time, of course, we were buying electric from the electrical company. So So our thought process there was to say, okay, well, let's take the month of January which was kind of, you know, right after Christmas. So it was kind of the anti-Christmas. Everybody's into consuming and buying and accumulating trinkets during the month of December. So we're going to say, okay, this month of January, let's just see if we can go the whole month without spending any money on anything. Don't or, go, or any energy. Well, no yeah, energy. that was Nance's idea. I wasn't all that keen on that. But, uh, but we did. But I did it. I did it. Yeah, <laughs> we did it. And, and uh, so the, the thought there was, okay, let's see if we can't for the month. You know, we'll fill up the gas tanks on December 31st. Can't fill up the tank all month long. Uh, we're not going to go to the grocery store. We're not going to buy anything. Let's see how that works. So, so how, did, how, how did that work? It's all a blur. Because they were so resistant to it. (laughs) Um, I thought it was fantastic. And I I could never have imagined what would come of it. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But um, I think it was a time of uh, taking a vacation from 
almost everything about our culture. We had people visit, people brought things. Um, I think it was pretty cold that year, maybe snowed a lot. Uh, and so we looked up and we saw that the National Weather Service said that sundown was at 515 the, the month of January. So we said, all right. Uh, we allowed ourselves to charge our computers because we obviously had to keep working. But then at 5.15, we lit some candles and we had our dinner. We cooked everything on the wood stove, um, which is a just a fireplace wood stove. It's not a proper cooking wood stove. And we put on our headlamps when we needed to see better, like to do dishes or something like that. And um, and that's how we lived for a month. Or to, you've conveniently forgotten that I beat you at... Uh, um, cribbage. And, Not that and year. That was backgammon. later. Back, no, no back this has been a forever I, thing. Okay. So. Well, back when I got my temper mm-hmm. going. So, um, But the thing that also happened right before we were going to um, have this month without consuming anything, uh, you got a, a teaching job at Zane State College as an adjunct to teach that month. So then it kind of messed up our whole thing about energy as far as gas consumption. We also had a teenager at home at that time, and she announced, I'm not participating, and which we thought was really funny because we were trying to figure out how that was going to happen. Uh, and so we called her Miss America. Right, and she, because she was one-third of the population, yet consumed about three-quarters of all the resources. That's right, that's right mm-hmm. or more. Uh, but it was kind of cool because, well, we've always sat down together to eat, and we insisted that had to be the case whether you ate anything or not. Um, but the first morning she got up and she said, I'm really proud of myself. I didn't have my light on last night when I read. I read with my headlamp. And then that night when she came to dinner, she said, I kind of like the candlelight kind of thing. Um, and so we muddled along with the gas and tried to figure out what to do. But it was it was really, I think, quite um, relaxing. We were editing a book that we'd written, and just all kinds of things were going on, and it was fun. So the next year, we kept at it, and then that was a month, and we liked it so much, we said, let's try to go into February and see what happens. So we went two months that year, and then the next year, uh, I think we had gotten the array, the solar array, so that kind of messed up the whole thing of not using electricity. So uh, we just said, all right, it's just going to be about consuming. Um, so no no buying of anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we do buy feed for our livestock because we don't have the ability to uh, hold enough of that in – in a safe place, but other than that, and for some reason, the goats don't really get don't into the wait. whole no. uh, spirit of things. For no, nothing. so that year and since those years, so we've been doing this now. I think this will be our sixth year uh, when coming up in two thousand at the end of this year. But we started December the first, which everybody seems a little bit shocked by. And we went to near the end of March. We sometimes succeeded to get all the way to the end of March. And sometimes we didn't because I teach a class, a college class uh, for the University of Dayton on travel, and uh, I needed fresh fruit. I didn't have time to uh, to make something, and so I cheated, and yes. I bought some fresh fruit. So a, a lot of people, you know, of course, in, in our culture would say, all right, it's it's – it's impractical or it's difficult to think of myself going four months without purchasing of anything, food, um, but we any, don't need any food. items. We I know. And we, we have a lifestyle that will support this. But what do you – what what to you? I can tell you what the hardest thing for me is. Well, you know. let's hear that. All right, Jay the hardest Warnke. thing for me um, <laughs> is is actually getting up in the morning and having to wait about an hour for the hot water to heat up for oh, coffee. Oh, that's so sad. I know, first world problem, but but it's definitely a problem. <laughs> Especially and, for you, you're a coffee junkie, right? And of course, without having the hot water um, for showers, then that became using one of those camping bags and hanging it in the shower and heating water on the on the wood stove and but all of that wasn't heated, such we've a always huge heated thing. tons of all of our water that we consume right. other than uh washing well even the washing dishes 
uh, in the wintertime, we usually have used the hot water from the wood stove. So that wasn't that big but, a deal. But speaking this out loud now, I, I could imagine <laughs> people out there going, look, you've got a hot water heater. All right, seriously, you're turning it off. Why are you doing that? You know, you've got electricity. Seriously, you're going to sit in the dark in the evening for four months. You're not going to go to the store. Why the heck are you doing this? Because I mean, we this needed a vacation. You know, it's just like this constant bombardment of what you need to buy and what's wrong with you for not buying it. I mean, I can be on the Internet and look at something online that has nothing to do with anything I'm going to buy. And then I go to a social media page and in the right hand side, there is the item I just looked at trying to follow me around to get me to buy another one or more or whatever. So for me, and that's the long term result of this is um, we started creating an annual shopping list, which has been super fun. And we go back and we say, is that on the annual shopping list? And they would be like, no. So then we talk about, are we going to buy that or do we really need that? Um, But we know a lot of what we need for the year. So that was, that came from that. Um, I think what ultimately came from that was that we never went back to shopping. Right. Like other it, it, became a, it became Just, a lifestyle change. Yeah, it's a real lifestyle change. Mm-hmm. And so the other thing that happened that was sort of humbling for me anyway, I guess that was – this is the hardest part, is if I wanted to go somewhere, I needed to ask somebody. It, so if somebody wanted me to go, like they're having a party or a get-together, and they want me to be there, somebody is going to have to pick me up because I'm not going to drive the car. So that was hard, although that was pretty cool because there were a lot of interesting conversations Mm -hmm. that came about as a result. So you were just telling them you were Amish, you know, we don't have electricity. No, I didn't say that. You need to be driven to different places. I didn't say that. Places like that. People were sympathetic. But the other thing that came from that that was really great for me was that, and, and humbling, was that if we did need something, we absolutely had to have something, and we couldn't figure out how to repurpose or reuse, which that's a lot of the fun part of this. Uh, We had to ask somebody to give it to us or something like that. Mm -hmm. So the first year, right out of the get-go, like the 2nd of January, um, you broke your boot string. I know. And you're such a tightwad. You don't have more (laughs) shoot strings or more or more shoes you could trade off. And you said, what am I going to do? Right. I'm sitting there with my shoelace in my hand going, okay, second day of thanks for nothing. It's going to be 30 days before I can buy a shoelace. All right. So So, what did I say? Yeah. Well, actually posted something on the internet and one of our friends sent a single shoelace (laughs) through the mail. And what happened the next day? And as soon as I got it, (laughs) my other shoelace broke. So, uh, And you had to humble yourself again to ask for the uh, other one. I tell you, I was, it was like being a street beggar for shoelaces, you know, we'll work for shoelaces. We'll work for shoelaces. (laughs) So, so anyway, uh, I know one year I was teaching a class and my camera uh, that somebody dropped the camera and, and bent the telescoping lens, and I needed to have a camera. So I went online, and I said, I need a camera. And uh, I got several emails about it and f- Facebook posts, and I somebody gave me a camera, brought it to me, and then three other people mailed me cameras. Um, so I was able to gift those cameras to other people. So I think, you know, what's come for me is that I need to humble myself sometimes and also realize – we're in America. Lots of people have lots of stuff they don't need anymore. Right. I don't think it's humbling either. I mean, necessarily, because we have, we collectively, we have so much extra stuff. And I know if somebody that we know needs something that we have extra of, it's a pleasure to give it to them. You know, it's it's nice to say, okay, I've got an extra camera, and and well, I'll be happy to share. What's the reason you don't ask? Then it's just because you're a man, or no, no, I just don't need anything. <laughs> You want me to ask? I have everything I need (laughs) except shoelaces. You don't even ask for directions. Come on. You're listening to When the Biomass Hits the Wind Turbine with Jay and Annie Warmke, reminding you that it is the end of the world as we know it. I have no idea. Yeah, thank God. Oh, come on. All right. All right. And we are also reminding you to be thankful for nothing. Oh, okay. yeah. Thanks for nothing. Thanks so for nothing. We're talking about conscious consumption here today. And we were just kind of wandering, uh, uh, meandering through our memories of our thanks for nothing season where we try and go several months now each year without purchasing anything. I'll tell you the big payoff for me because, because, um, 
you know, I worry about these things, was that first year, you know, every month I get the credit card bills and, and then I have a little panic attack and, and lie curled in a fetal position on the oh, ground. Oh, you do not. We I pay the that. credit card off every month. But, it's our but business card. But then the card. month after uh, the Thanks for Nothing, it was zero. You know, I was like, oh, this is nice. This is nice. So, um, so that was a big payoff. So, and and I found, as you were saying, it was a relaxing period of time because not only are you not spending any money, but you, I felt no pressure to be earning any money, which is nice. Plus, you're doing other things besides. Oh, you know, you're sort existing. Of the consumption. Yeah, you're, existing. you're living. How's that? Well, but the other thing I would say about the the bill idea is that. Um, we we have to pre- do some preparation. I think last year we didn't do any preparation. Uh, but over the years before that, we were preparing. And so we would make sure that we had enough toilet paper um, and different th- things coffee, like that. Coffee. Coffee. I actually oh. went overboard on the coffee. <laughs> I, I remember thinking, okay, I got to get through the four months on coffee. And actually, it was this August that yeah. we finally ran out of the coffee that I had hoarded. I, I think uh, <laughs> Juan <laughs> Valdez came. He sent me a Christmas card, you know, <laughs> saying thank you very much for keeping <laughs> Colombia afloat this year. So, mm-hmm. yeah, okay, well, uh, I don't think I don't think that was that we're like that with other things, but we want to mm-hmm. make sure that we have what we need. Um, so. We do allow ourselves if we need something for the business, if we absolutely have to have it, uh, if we're teaching and we need some kind of supply and we can't really reuse or repurpose something, um, we we will buy it if we have to. But that's the only exception, and so that is a, a rare thing. Um, well, but I well think- what, ad- what advice would you have for people who are – you know, perhaps listening and saying, "Okay, fine, fine, fine. You guys are wackos. Um, I don't no, want to go a without." You're wacko. I'm perfectly. I'm a wacko, and you're good. Mrs. Wacko. And uh, <laughs> so, so we don't want to go several months without <laughs> consuming. You know, I want to go to the gas station. I want to buy food at the grocery store. I don't have chickens to give me eggs or goats to give me milk. Um, I just, it's just not practical given my lifestyle. So, so what are some practical ways to practice conscious consumption? To that suburbanite or city dweller or, or country even, dweller. That's right, anybody. Mm-hmm. I think, first of all, uh, we talk a lot about that in these shows. It's about planning. And I don't think you have to be, you know, a project manager to figure these things out. But I know uh, over the course of the summer, I have the ability to raise a certain amount of food. And people are shocked at how little food it seems like we do raise. But we raise a substantial amount of food based on what we know we'll need and make salsas and uh, spaghetti sauce and things like that. And we dry things. Um, I buy in the fall. I buy – I raise new potatoes in the summer, spring and the summer. But then the fall keeping potatoes I buy from Paul's Market, which is a local um, farm market. And so I just have sort of a pattern of things of what I do. And because I have an annual shopping list, I know what I need. Uh, I know for the holidays that I've got to be prepared for the gifts that I'm going to give and um, what I'm going to do for – so I start that in the summertime. Like I'm going to – don't listen, Catlin, but I'm making some uh, uh, herb vinegars for everybody. And I – will have shopped and bought some little things like books at the library sale and that type of thing. So I will be ready long before December 1st uh, in terms of what I'm going to do. We have a big party in December. We will have thought that through and had uh, things that we are going to need for the party well ahead of time or produce them already. So it's really about that balance of my life requires a certain amount of planning. My life is going to require a certain amount of food and energy and gift giving and fun and all of those things. So what are those things? Well, I can't 100% know all of it, but I can be prepared as much as possible and also have some flexibility. Um, And I, frankly, my favorite part about Thanks for Nothing uh, season 
is the fact that we have to constantly be thinking, rethinking things. So, all right, so this isn't going to work because we don't have this particular thing. So what could we put in its place? And it's absolutely amazing sometimes what we're able to do, what we find when we're looking for something else. And we say, all right, we're going to use that, and that's going to help us to do whatever the project is. So. And, and oftentimes we end up uh, – Using that as the norm afterwards That's because you true. go, hey, I like that better than yeah. the other thing, yeah. you know. Yeah. So. But it's stepping outside of that, th- that little line, that little path that's in your brain and saying, I'm going to create some new pathways and that's exactly how the brain works. And I'm going to do things like turn off the TV and maybe so, – so one of the things that happens is people – get in touch with us and they ask, well, what could I do? Because just like you said, I don't live in the environment you live in. And so make one change, you know, don't watch, don't watch television as it exists. Maybe decide for the month of uh, January or February when it's cold and miserable anyway. Um, I'm only going to watch one film and I'm only going to watch it on Mondays and Friday nights or something like that. And I'm not going to turn on television programs. I'm going to get that from Netflix or like we're so quaint as our interns say, we get our, we get our um, Netflix through the mail. Yeah. But, when, the, when the river thaws. And yeah, the that's mail right. Comes, the, and mail, the, mail the mule, <laughs> the mule from the mail service comes yeah. across the river. But the point, but wait, the point is this, and that is that we, we choose what we put into our brains at a time when we're already slowed down and So you're resting. saying it's conscious living. I mean, it's, it it's not only consumption. conscious consumption, but it's living life mm-hmm. aware, being, yeah. being aware. And, and I think it occurs to me, or it occurs to me when you were speaking there, that a lot of people use shopping as a form of entertainment. Right. You know, this is their, their recreation, their leisure, you know, to go out shopping and buying stuff. Yeah. Which this whole philosophy says, no, don't don't do that. It's almost like saying, you're going on a diet, so don't eat chocolate. You know, mm-hmm. it's like you may enjoy that, but it's not necessarily good for you. Good for well, but there's lots of other things to do instead. Sure. And I think that's one of the challenges we have in this culture is we've sort of disconnected from where things really come from, and so we're trying to fill up that emptiness we have in ourselves by not being so spiritual as we might be. I know for myself, one of the mantras that I carry have carried around for many, many, many years, maybe a couple of decades, is that if I buy something new besides undies, um, which I'm always going to buy new, but mm-hmm. other than that— You can if, try rent to own, you know. I, I mean, heard that from uh, you yesterday. I don't <laughs> right. think that's an option. Uh-huh. Um, but anyway, you make me lose my train of thought, you stinker. <laughs> right. Uh, anyway, uh-huh. so the the thing is that when you buy something new, then then the problem is that it leaves a hole on the shelf that tells corporate America we may, we need to build another one, but maybe there doesn't need to be another one. So there's plenty of things out there that exist already that maybe you have or or that someone else has that we can swap or trade or buy from each other. And I think that is much more pleasurable. You're going to crash this whole economy down around its No, knees, and that's right? the argument is that people say that, but it isn't mm-hmm. true. It absolutely isn't true. I, we, could, we could cause some real problems around the whole idea of just buying stuff because you want to buy stuff. But when we pull back and we say we only need certain things and how we can work with each other to achieve those things, there would be more employment, better paid employment. People would be happier. The happiness factor would go much higher than, uh, than it is. In fact, the highest, the, the highest point we've been happy is 1956. Everything's been downhill from there. I was consuming a lot less in 1956 than I, I do today. I bet you were. <laughs> oh, <laughs> right. geez, that's bad. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to say a couple more things is that in, most people are worried that if they have nothing to do. And in my experience, um, whenever one thing goes away, there's all kinds of things waiting to come. And we need to make choices about how to to do those things. So, for example, uh, a few years ago, we bought a ping pong table and we bought a secondhand ping pong table. We were a little bit concerned if it was just a wild uh, expenditure or if it was really going to be useful. And we've had so much fun uh, with people uh, playing ping pong with young people, with old people, and um, and playing you know four people together and all that kind of thing. And we uh, 
enjoy reading books and sharing things that we read with each other, um, drinking coffee and tea together and just listening to the radio and commiserating about life and the universe. And which brings me back to the whole thing of the cribbage game. So <laughs> it was sounding like the Waltons there for no, a minute. No, for a minute, but, but then there was a war. Bobby Riggs versus yeah. Billy Jean so, King. Here. So one of the things that I didn't realize I know I'm competitive. Everybody loves to say Annie Warmke is so competitive. Uh, I don't really see it that much. But so I decided, hey, this winter, two years ago, this winter, let's play cribbage. I used to love to play cribbage, and it would be really fun. And I also know that I knew how to play, and you didn't. So I had a chance to win, at least in the beginning. So when winter came and it snowed and everything in the evening, we got the cribbage board out and we started to play. And I did win the first night. But then the next night, you came out of nowhere right at the end, and you beat me. And you beat me again and again and again in the same way. And I tell you, I never realized what a temper I had. So thanks for nothing, season taught me that I should never play cribbage with you. Um, and I'm dead serious because I was ashamed of myself to get so angry. <laughs> and each day I would say, no, we're going to play tonight, and I've got it under control. And then you would beat me again, and I would just be so really incredibly angry. Well, and I, was, I was trying to teach you humility. So. Well, I got that humility, mm-hmm. and I'm good to go, and no more cribbage for me. Okay, so if you wanted to um, give anyone advice other than not to play me at cribbage, um, <laughs> what kind of advice would you give as far as uh, conscious consumption uh, for this year? I mean, first off, we can always say, hey, join us for Thanks for Nothing. Well, that's month. right. But the other thing is just think about some things that you do, like maybe you don't shave for the month. And you don't do anything uh, that has to do with, you know, okay, you're going to take a shower and be clean, but you're going to just not use cosmetics or you're, you know, just choose some little thing that you really could do. Or every night you're going to make sure you sit down with your family and eat food at the table together, or you're going to eat more vegetables that month, or I don't care what it is, but ju- it's kind of like Lent. You'd like to say that. Right. It, it, uh, it's always struck me as sort of a non-sectarian kind of way. Every every major religion has some period of time, usually 30 days, where they say, okay, we, we want you to be conscious of what you're doing, conscious of what you're consuming, whether it's Ramadan, not consuming during daylight hours, or Lent, where you give up you know, Pokemon or something for a month or whatever it is oh, that you Christians. choose. Yes. Uh, <laughs> well, well, you want to give up something, but not something not you really like. You know, <laughs> yeah. no, so nothing like coffee or anything like that. <laughs> I'll give up. Uh, I don't know shopping. There you go. I, I know hate you'll that. give it's, up it's cabbage. Like, it's like pulling teeth. So. <laughs> All right. Any anything else? Any other words of wisdom? Well, just that I would encourage people to try. You know, the thing is, it's really fun, and I felt good about myself, and I look forward to Thanks for Nothing season every year, and I've already started thinking about it, and it's only August. And what's on the Christmas list for me this year? I'm not telling. Other than vinegar. I'll tell you, I'm not really excited about that. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, well, you have been listening to When the Biomass Hits the Wind Turbine with Jay and Annie Warmke. Thanks for spending a little time with us. And as your grandmother probably told you, the secret to a happy and sustainable life is to play nice with others, clean up your own mess, and for heaven's sake, eat your vegetables. Eat your vegetables with uh, vinegar, a Christmas gift vinegar. (laughs) All right, till next time. Mother Earth will sing and her children will be. You can find more information on living sustainably in our unsustainable world at BlueRockStation.com.